Hello friends. Good evening to everyone. I am back. I am back with webinar number 33 this time on industrial risk analysis from man-made and natural surges as per IEC 62305. With the respected honorable, my mentor, my guru, KV Vardharajan sir, he's earthing and lightning design expert. Welcome sir. And dear all, it is essential to design you are building, you affect the your industry for lightning protection based on the IEC, based on the risk analysis already described in IEC 62305. When we talk about the risk analysis or risk assessment, it depends on the area with lots of human, salient organization providing services, areas that experiences regular lightning flashes. And the building with storage of inflammable items. When I talk about the risks involved, the risk of loss of human life or permanent injury, loss of services to public, loss of cultural heritage, and loss of economic values. And the sources of this risk components are lightning strike to structure, lightning strike to near to structure, lightning strike at the incoming lines to the structure, or lightning strike near the incoming lines to the structure. And the subject is of paramount importance and must be understood by all the engineers. I'm quite sure no one other than respected KV Vardarajan sir can thoroughly explain this subject and he's with me. Now time to give thanks to all the persons who are working this webinar, behind this webinar, before I give introduction of today's presenter. So first of all, I would like to thank Almighty, my parents, my wife, my son, my mentors include respected P.P. Vahi Sahib, Anjuri Chandra Ma'am, Murthy Sahib, N.K. Mittal Ji, P. Ramachandran Sir, S.A. Pao Sir, Hitesh Chuhan Ji and Kamal Bansar Sir, Dr. Kamal Bansar. My friends and my well wishes include Saket Gupta Ji, Arvind Tukraj Ji, Dr. Vikas Nesh Singh Ji, S.K. Batra Ji. And my team who is working 24 into 7 to making this to happen, Gulab and Ram Dhani. And now time to give a brief introduction about Today's presenter, respected K.V. Vardharajan sir. He is basically graduate in electronics and communication engineering with PG diploma in marketing management. He has more than 20 years of experience in the field of lightning and surge protection after completing 15 years of service in leading instrumentation company like ABB, FoxPro, <clears throat> in the DCS and the field instruments. He is the first SPD technical salesperson in India which not only includes low voltage power line protection, but also complete range of electronics, communication and instrumentation equipment protection. He has in-depth knowledge in Indian and international standards related to lightning protection, surge protection and earthing. He has held key position in MTN India and OBO Betterman India, the reputed international organization in the field of power, data and instrumentation line SPDs. He has visited Germany, UK, USA, Hong Kong, Singapore, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and shared his knowledge and experience to prevent industry-related failures in electronics and electrical equipment. He has also presented work, presently worked as a consultant in Jeff Techno Solutions Travel Limited, and he has written many articles in EMA, Electrical India, Communication Today, and offered more than 1,500 Presentation on lightning, surge protection, earthing in India and abroad. And he has offered guest lecture in program organized by FICI, CII, Fire Safety Association of India, Tech Expert, and offered guest lecture in IIT Madras, Anna University, VIT, etc. He has also participated in the TV programs on the importance of people and equipment protection in three leading Chennai-based TV Tamil channels. And his designs include LPS and SPD4, Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, Jikro Das, Island through Itkins, Installation and Leading South America Industry, among others. And now, time to invite respected Vardhan sir. Sir, welcome to the show. And I'm quite sure with your knowledge that all the participants will get benefit. Hand over to you, sir. Kindly start your presentation. Thank you, Aran Raji. Uh, okay, let me go to the screen. Yeah.
is the slide visible uh presently not but i have shared is it now mm, no sir Yes. Is it okay now? No, it's okay, sir. Okay. Perfectly. Uh, uh, thanks to Dr. Arora for the introduction and uh, pranams to my mentor and uh, Guruji, Dr. G.R. Nagabhushna, who is a retired professor from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, who can prove anything in math mathematics. Okay. He can even prove lightning uh, in mathematics. But uh, it will be very difficult for many of us to understand, at least me, because he will start and other things. But he is one man who can uh, prove anything mathematically. With pronouns to him, I will start this session. So we are going to talk about, I am going to talk about the industrial risk analysis from man-made and natural surges. Okay. So we are uh, restricting this to industries. Uh, which are also applicable even to houses, but we will restrict now today to industries. Uh, though the natural surges are very uh, having very high current and voltage, and the man-made surges are very frequent. When you talk about man-made surges, it starts from uh, the electricity board switching over, and also what we do in the plants from mains to DG and DG to mains, Though many people call it as a bumpless transfer, uh, in real life, there is nothing like bumpless transfer because a yeah, cycle time of 20 milliseconds, it cannot come back. And also welding and many, many non-linear loads that we have, uh, we are introducing every day in our uh, life, in our industries. All these things creates a lot of man-made surges. Okay. Now, as per ISIEC 62305, Many of you might be aware that uh, IEC is an international standard. A Bureau of Indian Standard has adopted this IEC as an Indian standard also. Okay, Many countries have adopted and India has also adopted uh, IEC as a national standard in India. Now, as per uh, World Trade Organization Technical Barriers to Trade, uh, a treaty, a treaty is a written agreement between two or more countries. Okay. All others are national standard. When we talk about the uh, Bureau of Indian standard or a British standard or an IEEE standard or National Fire Protection Association standard, kindly keep in mind they are all national standards. They are not international standards. There are only three international standards. Okay. These standards are IEC, International Electrotechnical Commission, uh, and ITU, International Telecom Union, and uh, the third one is, I cannot see the, okay, so it is IEC, ISO, and uh, ITU. These are the only three international standards. Of course, we can get information from all other standards. What is the advantage of going to an international standard? For example, assume that a German company is uh, putting a plant in India. Okay. So these companies have uh, engineering practices which are common all over the world. Okay. Now, if you say that in India, we don't follow the international standard, we follow only IS standard, they may not be able to read the IS standard and implement India. But once you follow the international standard, Anywhere in the world you can follow. The biggest advantage is that anybody can review what has been done and 
certification is also very easy. Now, if you see the fatality of five major disasters for the last 45 years, you can see that when compared to flood, landslide, cold stroke and heat stroke, lightning fatality is the combination of even flood, landslide and cold stroke. But still why it is not getting importance? Because if you take flood and landslide or cold stroke or heat stroke, they are all concentrated in one specific area, like the flood in Chennai recently or 2015. So it gets the attention of media immediately because it is concentrated in one specific place. Whereas lightning happens around the world in all the places. So at the same time, you cannot gather the data from everywhere. But uh, the slide says very clearly that lightning related fatality is much, much higher than the floods, landslide and the cold stroke. Now, a study by Manufacturer Association Information Technology, it shows that Indian industries lost 9.6 billion in direct cost due to poor power quality. Okay, and operating environment related downtime. Okay, now 57% of this total failure loss was due to the voltage sag and short interruptions, whereas 35% of the losses were due to transient and surges. Okay, but if you see the mainly the cost of prevention for these events is less than 10% of the cost of the problem. For example, if you have lost maybe 50 lakhs due to one lightning strike, if you have introduced SPDs for about 5 lakhs, approximately 10% of that, you would have avoided this bigger problem. Okay, then this economic impact of poor power quality in various industrial sectors, a report by IIT Daily says, the model regulation on power quality, the voltage transition limit and main signaling voltage may not be included and the user should apply the surge suppression devices or equipment at the service entrance and that sensitive equipment to protect against damage and the mall operation due to lightning and other, other high frequency tensions based on appropriate application engineering and analysis. So as you are all aware, there are many protective equipments. They have fuse, MCB, stabilizer, UPS, auto transformer, etc., etc. But there is an application for each and every of them. One cannot solve the, uh, all the problems. So the SPDs have to be installed at the service entrance and that sensitive equipment to protect against the damages and mall operation due to lightning. When I say it is not just lightning, which is a uh, um, uh, natural uh, source, man-made surges also account for these kind of failures which are much more than the natural sources. And of course, natural sources are much heavier in terms of voltage and current. Now, when it comes to safety devices, it is not the return on investment. We always uh, are familiar or with return on investment, whereas here it is return on assets. So what is return on assets? It is nothing but the net income divided by the average total assets. So what is the improvements you get due to the return on assets? Direct savings in hardware. That is the premature failure will come down. Suppose if you take a control system or a PLC from a leading supplier, he may take say that uh, I will give guarantee for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, etc. But there will be a fine print which says that Due to act of God, if something happens, we will not be responsible. We will not be replacing any equipment. And unfortunately, the lightning is an act of God. But it is not just act of God. It is also man-made service. So when you avoid the premature failures, and obviously you can eliminate the catastrophic failures. So with the result that the plant availability will increase. So the today's mantra is, Okay, this year the plant availability is 90%. Next year I want it as 95%. And the year after that I want is 98%. So the increasing plant availability will also only give more profits. 
So increased plant availability because of the reduction of premature failures and control spike failures. And indirect savings as a result of better deployed maintenance team. Your maintenance team can be deployed for the preventive maintenance rather than breakdown maintenance. You are all aware that uh, the breakdown maintenance, the amount of loss and the, uh, the reduced time available to set the system, all these things can be avoided and you can better employ your manpower for the preventive maintenance. Now, as I said earlier, there are many kinds of uh, power related problems. There can be sag, there can be swell, there can be interruption. Okay. Whereas the transient voltage surges are very short term voltage rises. When you say very short term, what is the magnitude? It can be several times the nominal voltage. Suppose if your nominal voltage is 230 volts, it can be above 6,000 volts very easily. These are all the ratings given in the standards that 1,500, 2,500, 4,000 and 6,000. The 6,000 voltage is the equipment withstand capacity at the uh, transformer level. 4,000 voltage is the main DB level. 2,500 voltage is the sub DB level and 1500 and recently it has been reduced the 1000 voltage to electronic equipment which is the computers plcs drives and whatnot so basically it is loss of economics and loss of life which are related to general industries okay when you take industries okay in india unfortunately we give more importance when i say we uh, the management gives more importance to loss of economics, okay, because how much economics you lose and what is, is directly related to your uh, plant uh, downtime. And of course, loss of life, okay, employees are uh, the assets to industries and experienced employees are indispensable, which we are all aware. And employees' life is directly related to credibility of industries because Nowadays, we can see in all plants, the, as soon as you enter, you can see that the number of days without accident act is maybe 100 days, 200 days, 300 days. More the number of days, the better is the credibility for the company. Now, the special type of buildings, for example, now we know about the Ram Mandir recent. If something happens to Ram Mandir due to lightning, so you cannot attach any value to that. Uh, I have read that uh, the LNT has told that for thousand years nothing will happen to the Ram Mandir because they have not used any steel or anything because steel will corrode. So when such is the importance of the cultural heritage, it should not get affected by a simple lightning strike. Okay, and loss of public services. Now our dependency on power electronics and uh, say day-to-day -day life in uh, the mobiles have increased day by day. And without mobile, we are just dumb people. Okay, so, and any loss of public services causes inconvenience. For example, assume that there is a lightning strike, a police telecom tower. And if the telecom equipment of police is down, if it is known to the so, uh, thieves and other people, what will happen? So these are all dangerous. So the special kind of buildings are the cultural heritage and the public services, loss of public services. When you take a risk, what is a risk? A risk is the value of probable annual loss. Okay, for each type of loss, the relevant risk shall be evaluated. As uh, Dr. Arora said at the beginning, there are basically four types of risk. There is risk of loss of human life and risk of loss of service to the public. And for special type of buildings, risk of loss of cultural heritage. And fourth, risk of loss of economics. Now, there are four sources. Okay, lightning can strike the building. As you can see, S1, lightning is striking the building directly. When there is a lightning strike to the building, there are three types of damages. One is injury to living being. There is a physical damage and failure of equipment. And each one of damages 
further gives different types of losses. Whereas injury to living being leads to loss of life and loss of economics. And physical damage is related to everything, loss of life, loss of service, loss of heritage and economics. Whereas failure of equipment relate to loss of life. Suppose if you are somebody is in hospital, okay, in the life-saving equipment, the loss of equipment will lead to loss of life and loss of service and loss of economics. Now, when you take S2, the lightning near the structure, it is not on the structure like S1, it is near the structure. It is related to failure of equipment. And again, that is related to loss of life, loss of services and loss of economics. Now, we have done with lightning strike to the building and near the building. Now, the third one is a flash to the service. The service not only includes your power line, data line, communication line, but please keep in mind the service line is also your metallic pipelines which carries water, sewer, gas, etc. So this has to be borne in mind always. Service is not just the power line, data line, communication line. It is also the water line, sewer line, gas line, and of course, which comes through the metallic pipelines. Okay. So, which is related to D1, injury to living beings, loss of life and economics, D2, physical damage is all, and failure of equipment is related to life, service, and loss of economics. Now, the fourth and last one is flashes near a service. Okay, when there is a flash near a service, there is failure of equipment, and which relates to loss of human life, loss of service, and loss of economics. Okay. Now, what is the general equation for the risk component? A risk R is a multiplication of N into P into L. The N is the number of dangerous events. The P is the probability of damage for a structure. And L is the consequent. And the risk components are many, RA, RB, RC, RM, RU, RV, RW, RZ. I am not going to bore you with all the explanation of all these things because the risk assessment itself is a big subject of three to four hours, which involves more than 150 equations. Okay. At a relevant point, I will tell what is RA, RB and RC. Now, what is a tolerable risk? Okay. Now, let us take with a small example. If there is an ant bite, we can tolerate. But if there is a snake bite, we cannot tolerate. So for everything, there is a tolerable risk. Once you know the level of tolerable risk, then you calculate the risk for your factory using the risk analysis 62305 2. Unfortunately, the software is available for calculating this. OK. You can compare the calculated risk with the tolerable risk. And the IEC 62305 gives the tolerable values. For loss of human life, it is 10 power minus 5. That means 1 out of 1 lakh people can die due to lightning in a factory, for example. So this is a tolerable risk. Now, loss of service. 1 out of 1,000 service can go bad. This is a tolerable risk. And loss of cultural heritage, one out of 10,000 cultural buildings can go bad due to lightning. That is the tolerable risk. And economic loss, one out of 1,000 equipment can go bad. Suppose if it exceeds these levels, that is more than one people out of uh, one lakh, or more than 1,000 in uh, service to the public, or more than 1,000 equipment failure, then your calculated risk is more than the tolerable risk. Then you have to employ techniques which can reduce your calculated risk below the tolerable risk levels. So earlier, before the introduction of this standard, there was no tolerable risk limit. Each consultant will have a different uh, yardstick for a tolerable risk. But now with the introduction of IEC 62305 in 2005, you have the tolerable risk very clearly defined so you calculate the risk and see whether it is below or above the tolerable risk. If it is below the risk, there is no need to take any action. If it is above the risk, then you have to see ways of 
reducing it below the tolerable level. Now, what is the flow chart? You have to identify the structure to be protected. Is it an RCC structure, whether it is a steel structure or thatched roof or something like that? Then also identify the type of loss relevant to the structure or this are protected, whether due to S1, S2, S3, S4, or the service. And for each type of loss, identify the tolerable risk levels and calculate all the risk component using the risk assessment. Then your R risk is the sum of all Rx, which is RA, RB, RC, RD, and up to RZ. If the calculated risk is more than the tolerable risk, if it is yes, you have to install adequate protection measures. If it is no, the structure does not need protection. It is already having adequate protection. Now, telling in the other way, after identifying the loss of uh, relevant to the structure, you have to identify the each risk component, RA, RB, RC, RM. As I said, RA is injury to living being to, through source S1. And RB is physical damage to structure. And RC is failure of equipment due to direct strike on the building. And RM is failure of uh, internal structure due to uh, lightning strike near the building. Okay, same way it is for RU, RV, RW, RZ related to services that is lightning striking on the service and near the service. So as you know, if the risk is more than R, you need to have a LPS installed. And after installing the LPS, if the RB, which is the physical damage structure, is still more than the tolerable limit, you need to have adequate type of LPS and you have to install LPMS, Lightning Protection Measures Techniques. The Lightning Protection Measures Techniques not only includes a direct uh, lightning protection system for the building and SPDs for the equipment, it also includes other engineering practice by routing, shielding, uh, EQ potential bonding, and other techniques. Now, when you see the risk component RA to RZ, there are many factors which affect some or few components, whereas surface or soil resistivity is related to RA, which is injury to living being. And physical restriction, insulation warning notice, soil EQ potentialization. Then the lighting protection system and coordinated SPD protection. What is a coordinated SPD? It is nothing but the SPD which you install in DB as to protect the SPD in the sub DB. And the SPD at the sub DB have to protect the SPD in the down the line equipment. So there should be a proper coordination between all these SPDs. Just like fuse coordination, this is called SPD coordination, which is a voltage coordination. Then you have the space shielding techniques and also shielding of external lines. Then shielding of internal lines. The internal lines is power line, data line, communication lines. And routing precautions, how close has to be your data line with the power line or the communication line? How you do the bonding network? Suppose you have a cable tray, metallic cable tray. How do you do bonding of that? What kind of fire precautions you are taking? It is automatic or a manual. And sensitivity of the fire in that particular area. The special hazards in the special type of industries like hazardous area plants. And the last but not the least, the, the impulse withstand voltage of various equipment. As I said at the beginning, an equipment at the main DB can withstand a higher voltage. An equipment at the sub DB can withstand a lesser voltage. An equipment at the electronic equipment level like PLC, DCS can withstand very less voltages because the kind of component used SPDs are different for main DB, sub DB and equipment. Now, there are various IEC standards. 62305 has got four parts, part one to four. Part one is basic principles. Part two is the risk of assessment. Part three is protection of structures and life hazard. And part four is 
protection of electrical and electronic equipment within the structure. Now, what are all the relevant standards which is associated with IEC 62305, which is called the normative reference as per the IEC name. It is 61643 level, LVSPD for power, the testing methods, then 12 selection principles, the 21 for communication lines, the testing methods, then 22, the communication line selection and principles. Then IEC 6036453 low voltage system isolation switching and control. Now I would like to tell you what is this low voltage because low voltage, the definition varies from a standard to standard. As per IEC, anything up to 1000 volts AC or 1500 volts DC comes under low voltage. Up to 100 kilovolts is medium voltage. More than 100 kilovolts is high voltage. So if you refer any IEC standard, the definition is this. Up to 1000 volts AC or 1500 volts DC is a low voltage system. Okay, so when you take a lightning protection system, basically it is divided into external LPS and internal LPS. And generally the external LPS is called as LPS. And internal LPS, people mean it is SPD. It is not only SPD, as you can see here, there are many things associated with this. And external, as you're all aware, there are three basic components, air terminal, down conductor, and ring air thing. Uh, maybe if time doesn't permit, if somebody wants to know what is a ring air thing, we can discuss later during the question and answer, or afterwards, if somebody is interested through Dr. Rajesh Arora. Then the internal LPS is again by direct bonding or bonding using SPDs. Direct bonding is the exposed conductive parts. The exposed conductive parts is, for example, your air terminal, down conductor, earthing, which is intended for the lightning protection. And the extraneous conductive parts. Extraneous is nothing related to its lightning protection. As I said, it can be a metallic pipeline which carries uh, water, sewer, or gas. So these has to be directly bonded. Whereas when you take a power line, you cannot short a, a RYB to the earth. So it has to be done through SPDs. So the power lines and data lines. So when you take uh, the uh, earthing, okay, uh, or the lighting protection system for the building, before the construction of the building, if you make use of the structural steel of the building, which is ideal, which is uh, which doesn't involve any extra material and the life is equal to the life of the building. Whereas after completing the building, if you install lightning protection system, say for example, in a uh, refinery petrochemical, you want to put a copper air terminal down conductor. You do not know the next day they are available or somebody would have cut and stolen it. These problems are not there when you use the structural steel of the building as a lighting protection system because it does not involve any extra money. When I say it does not involve very little extra money. Okay. Now, when you take this IEEE 1159 2019 recommended practice for monitoring the power quality of equipment, you know there are various factors. There are very sh short uh, duration variants. There are millisecond, microsecond variants, okay, long duration variants. There are voltage imbalances. There are waveform distortions. There are voltage fluctuations and power frequency variations. So you can see the number of uh, uh, problems that can happen to a power line, which can be a low frequency, high frequency, medium frequency, sag, swell, interruption, DC offset unbalance, interharmonics, notching, noise, etc. Okay. Now, if you see the NBC, it talks about the sources of EMI and then how to reduce the EMI. The electrical equipment sensitive to electronic influence should not be located close to potential sources of electromagnetic emissions. Switching devices, electrical motors, fluorescent lighting, welding machines, Computers, rectifiers, chopper, frequency converter, lift, transformer, switch gears, power distribution, bus bars. 
Whereas, what are the measures you have to take? It is sensitive to electromagnetic influence. You need to have surge protection devices and or filters, depending upon the series type of uh, connection, the type of filters, EMI filters are recommended to improve the electromagnetic compatibility. When you have electromagnetic interference, you need to have the electromagnetic compatibility and then the complete bonding network of the metal sheet. Now, why do you need more and more protection devices now? As I said at the beginning, one is we are increasing non-linear devices every day in our plant. And number two, the withstanding capacity of electronic equipment is reducing day by day. When you take 1950s, we had vacuum tubes and 60s transistors, then 80s IC started, then 90s personal computers, then we have very large scale integration and you don't know tomorrow what will happen. Maybe uh, within your palm top, you can control an entire plant. So on one end, the size is reducing, which is excellent. But on the other hand, what is the energy handling capacity of it? Suppose I will give you an example. If you drop an apple from one meter height, the energy you need to hold in your hand is one joule of energy. When you compare that one joule of energy to the micro joule of energy, 10 power minus 6, which the VLSIs can handle, you can think of the kind of problem in today's electronics. So unless you have the protection with the UPS, the stabilizers, with the SPDs, with the EMI filters, and proper shielding, bonding, and electromagnetic efforts, there can be failure to your equipment, which will lead to production loss. So, in your plant, if you have a three-phase drive, the inverters, especially IGBT, and IGBT-based UPS, the EPABX, you have the modem router switches, you have the SMPS, and if not of any failure, just EEPROM corruption erasable, programmable, read-only memory corruption, or just tripping of drive. No need of any failure or even correction of just tripping of drive. Or any other card failure, the PLC, DCS, RTU, the in input card, output card, the power supply card, the communication card, and whatnot. If you notice any failure of all these things or any one of them, you have to install SPDs to reduce failures be a great expert. Now, when you take uh, the 62305, the protection against lightning part 4, protection of electrical electronic equipment within a structure, the need for the standard has arisen due to the increased cause of failure of electrical and electronic equipment caused by electromagnetic effects of lightning. What is the particular interest? Electronic systems, as I said earlier, because millijoules of energy is sufficient to cause damage, whereas the lightning flashes releases hundreds of megajoules of energy. Okay, then what is the scope of this standard? It provides the information for the design, installation, inspection, maintenance, and testing of LPMS, lightning protection measures system. Okay for electrical electronic systems, able to reduce the risk of permanent failures due to lightning impulse. And keep in mind, this does not cover the protection against the mall function because it is due to the electromagnetic interference for which you have to follow IEC 6034444 and IEC 61000 series. Okay, there are general myths from electrical engineers I don't need SPDs because I have LPS. I am telling you a real life example. One industry in Punjab, I don't want to name the industry, said that we don't want lightning protection system for our building. And they also told that we want lightning protection level three. We did risk analysis, we want level three. After providing the lightning protection system, they called me after an year and said that now we have more failures. I was what has failed? They said that a lot of electronics are failing. See, this is the problem. Before, instead of telling what exactly is the problem faced by them, 
they thought that just by installing a lightning protection system, all their problems can be solved. Because you have installed the lightning protection system, because it takes the lightning current to the earth, and when it is taking the lightning current, it finds the route for it to follow. And because SPDs were not installed, there were more failures. So it is better to explain the kind of problem faced by you to the specialist so that you can get the right solution. The correct way is to install a lightning protection system because you cannot take chances. And by installing the lightning protection system, we also must install the SPDs so that the equipments are protected from lightning. Okay, so we have LPS is not the solution. We have a lot of earth rods. We have 1,000 earth rods in our plant. In fact, if I, I want to tell you, Dr. Arora Ji also can uh, vouch for me. You don't need a single earth rod for your plant if you do a proper structural earthing and equipotential bonding. Please mark my words. You don't need a single earth rod for your plant. Okay, and it is not my words. It is explained in the standard very clearly. Whereas every plant is spending at least 100 or 150 earth beds replacement every year. Okay, so that is why if you follow the standard, it gives you all the techniques by spending less money, how can you protect your plant? And we have UPS for all critical equipment. Now the point is that even UPS needs SPDs. Okay, following slides explain the facts one by one. You have to pr practice Rams. Okay, recently we know I have heard a lot of uh, about Ram, Ram Mandir. Now we will see what is this Rams. Okay, so when you take uh, external LPS and local earthing, then you have not gone for the plant wide uh, EQ potential bonding technique. Okay. You have uh, external LPS alone, and there is no SPD, and you have only local earthing. What happens? Okay, lightning hits the stack, and the current flows. Okay, and the, when the current flows to the uh, ground, it does not disappear just like, okay, because your ground has got resistance and inductance. You, for example, just to take a one ohm 100 kilo ampere, 100 kilo volts. And this voltage will decay as the current propagates away from the stack. Say, for example, 500 meters away, say a control room is situated 500 meters away. It is 3 kilovolts because of the potential gradient of 97 kilovolts appearing between the stack and the control room. Okay, now. If there is no equipment in the stack and if it is not connected to DCS, still it is not a problem. Suppose if you have the Knox analyzer in the stack and which is connected to the DCS, there comes a problem because you have the local reference earth for the Knox equipment at the stack and the local reference for the DCS, which creates the potential difference, which results in the failure of the equipment in the stack and the analog input card where it gets connected. Okay, so LPS and earthing do not eliminate the risk of electronic failure of transmitter and analog input card of DCS. Proper EQ potential bonding, not just earthing with a simple earth rod, EQ potential bonding and proper use of SPDs both at the analog input card end at the stack um, end will only eliminate failure. Okay. Now external LPS and planned wide grid earthing, still I have no SPD. Okay. This reduces the problem. Again, this does not eliminate the problem. Again, you have the, uh, the, the earthing has got, uh, the uh, your equipotential bonding has got resistance and inductance. Okay. Now, external LPS and local earthing with SPD, okay. With local earthing, the problem I have explained earlier. Now, if you take UPS, okay, so you have a transfer switch. The transfer switch in the UPS is a UP based, microprocessor based. So, as I said earlier, even to protect your UPS, the transfer switch, you need SPDs. And especially when it is IGBT based drives and UPS, 
you must have spds to protect your ups and drives okay and with spd okay you have for the power line and also for the communication lines you can avoid problems okay what is rams it is rams is a well known method of estimating protection availability of a system by assessment models frequencies that is number of failures and consequences it is commonly used in engineering to uh, characterize a product or a system now if you take this chart the rams chart okay now you can see all these uh, bars with the uh, different colors when you have no effect on the plant operation and there is unlikely point of any failure providing spd has got no or little benefit whereas if you see this uh, brown line where minor uh, very likely due to minor effect or reduction in yield or the unit shutdown spd is mandatory if you take the yellow line spd is justified that is yellow line is for reduction in yield spd is justified with return on assets gains based on increased availability whereas if you take the blue line spd that is just uh, take the blue line minor effect okay spd is justified in terms of hardware savings alone okay so this is basically i have covered i have given you a, a small hint of the very broad subject and as you know the challenge for the uh, uh, people who are giving lecture is always the race against the time because we want to tell lot of things and uh, i myself is having some 150 different presentations which has been created for different customers uh, in my uh, experience of the last 20 25 years but as i uh, talk to dr arora the purpose of any of this one hour presentation or 45 uh, minutes presentation is to create a spark in you yes. and yes. make you to follow the standard uh, so that when you follow the standard and implement protection as per the standard your failures can be reduced to a great extent and now the important point is that i have told that the failures can be reduced i have not told the failures can be completely stopped because when you take a lighting protection level or when you see the standard you cannot 100% reduce the problem because the lighting protection level 1 itself is between 3 kilo ampere to 100 kilo ampere so when you say that 3 kilo ampere to 100 kilo ampere what happens when the lightning current is less than 3 kilo ampere or more than uh, 200 kilo ampere sorry it is not 100 200 so the lpl level 1 stall itself is only up to 98% accuracy which means there is 2% inaccuracy in your lightning protection system because if you want to have 100% protection the cost of protection will be very very high and also you will not be sure whether the lightning current tomorrow it may exceed 200 kilo ampere or 300 kilo ampere or 400 kilo ampere the cost will increase substantially to a very great extent uh, i think uh, arora ji i have completed my presentation thank you, thank you sir thank you very much insightful presentation that was mind blowing and thanks for that sir i have very small query from my side before i take question I have seen many tenders of government utilities. They are still mentioning IS two three zero nine. They are not mentioning IS six two three three zero five. I don't understand the purpose of mentioning that IS that has already been obsolete. Okay, let me let me clarify you. A very good question to start with. See, when this IS six two three zero five was introduced in two thousand five, okay. Uh, the main job of me was to visit all the consultants all over india and explain them the importance of 62305 as i explained the rt the tolerable risk is explained in this standard and once you know the tolerable risk and when you calculate the risk you can compare both of them now uh, i have given to many industries when you uh, in many cases i have been asked to Uh, ask questions before the webinar, and after the webinar, I have been asked to assess the understanding of the people. Uh, I have seen that when I ask the question of which is the Indian standard for earthing, people leave it on choice. 
So, okay. So, when an Indian standard of IS3043, which costs just 750 rupees, okay, is not available even in big industries. Uh, and the question what I have asked, IS230, because we are not aware of what is an IEC standard, what is the importance of an IEC standard. Okay. Even many of us feel that IEEE is much greater than IEC, mm. okay, which is a national standard. See, here I am not playing IEEE. Okay, IEEE is also a very good standard, but they talk about the techniques that has to be followed in USA. We are not in USA, we are in India. Right. So that is why the concept of think global and act local is, is there. Whereas IEC standard is common to all over the world. And specifically, they mention for different countries, if there are some different techniques adopted, that is also mentioned in IEC standard. Yeah. So when uh, the consultant mentioned IS 2309, uh, I, uh, the Bureau of Indian Standard have to tell them, uh, see, the one thing I was told by Bureau of Indian Standard when this IEC 6305 was introduced is, they told me, we cannot go and uh, talk to all the consultants. If you take up the, this exercise of talking to the consultants and then explaining the IEC, it is better for the country. So that is another reason why I have visited many consultants and the contractors all over India and gave this 1,500 presentations Great. in different parts of the world. And the second important point is you said very rightly that when you have installed some LPS system, the people think there is no need to go with the SPD. Even I face that difficulty when I discuss about the importance of SPD for my substation system. I usually get the same answer as you told. When my LPS system level 1 or 2 is there, no need to go with the SPD. They don't understand the importance. Your point was very valid. In uh, fact, people do not understand that instead of going for LPS level 1, say for example, for a plant it costs 50 lakhs, you go for a LPL level 3, which may cost you 20 lakhs, right. and install SPDs for 5 lakhs. So in 25 lakhs, you are protecting your plant as well as the equipment okay. instead of spending 50 lakhs for the level 1 and still having failure in your plant. Very true. Very true. Now time to ask question. Uh, kindly raise your hand and you will get a chance to talk with respected sir. Kindly raise your hand. There will be many questions in your mind and if you want to get the answers, it's a great opportunity to talk with Dr. Sir. Respected sir is available to answer the questions, the queries you have. Raise your hand, we will admit you. Mubarak Khan, kindly, kindly unmute, sir. Welcome, Mubarak Khan, yes. welcome. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Rajesh sir, good afternoon, that was a nice presentation. Okay, and uh, we have been learning this I62305 from long, and uh, mostly uh, all the users, they try to implement the system using the 62305. I had one question that there is a, there are new emerging technologies which are coming up for the, for lightning protection. Okay, uh, which are not uh, directly as per 62305, but rather they are claimed to be more advanced uh, solutions. Okay, and one of them is a system where uh, it prevents the lightning from occurring based on the Nikola Tesla principle. And there is another which is known as the ESC early streamer lighting protection system. Okay, so there are varied views on both of them uh, in various audiences. I would like to get uh, opinion of Mr. Vardarajan on these two, if you know. Yeah, uh, very relevant question and very important question. Uh, see, I think most of you are aware of uh, uh, Mr. Appau, who is the ex chief electrical inspector. When these people, uh, the ESC people, went and told uh, him that, sir, we have installed in Australia, we have installed in New Zealand, we have installed in all parts of the world. The simple answer by uh, Mr. Appau is that, okay, if your system is very effective, okay, go and talk to Bureau of Indian Standard and ask them to approve. There is no need for you to go to each and every customer and electrical inspector to meet and then uh, making them to use this. You convince them, Bureau of Indian Standard, 
or even better you go to iec and convince them once they are convinced your product is approved all over the world then why you are not taking that simple step of convincing one place rather than visiting all over the world and telling that we have 100 installations 1000 installations and 10000 installations and now when you talk about esc esc is based on the code nfc 17102 now nfc stands for national french code please note here it is not a standard it is a french code so now this national french code is ineffective because there is EN 62305, European norm 62305, and the European norm 62305 nowhere talks about the early streamer emission. And fortunately now we are all uh, addicted with words like the advanced technology, new technology. Unfortunately, lightning is deadly against advanced technology <laughs> because <laughs> your advanced technologies are based on the micro joules of energy LSI uses and uh, lightning within j just like that within uh, no time can destroy all these uh, electronics so whereas one is the esc is a national french code which is not even followed in france because france also follows bsen 62305 oh. now when you take the other systems like dissipation array system or charge transfer system uh, lightning if comes to india i will uh, send it to Pakistan so that I am saved. This doesn't happen at all because this is against physics itself. Okay, we don't talk about the standard. This is against physics because if you see the cloud, lightning cloud, the approximate diameter of the cloud varies from 15 kilometer to 30 kilometers. So, okay, for a, a 15 kilometer or a 30 kilometer diameter of a lightning cloud, how many DAS system you need, okay? And just with one DAS system, how can you protect the entire India? If that is the case, every country can have one lightning elimination system and solve the problem permanently, okay? And uh, you, you and even this can be installed in the not only in uh, Earth, it can be installed in Moon because then all our uh, aircraft, satellites, everything can be protected. <laughs> So there is nothing uh, like an advanced system when it comes to lightning, okay. Uh, because of the awareness of the standards are not there among people, unfortunately, they are cheated by all these companies by having a very good uh, marketing norms like early streamer. There is nothing like early streamer, nothing is that because all these are marketing gimmicks uh, because my mentor, Dr. Nagabhushna, says, uh, Vardarajan, if ESC and charge transfer system uh, uh, can eliminate this lightning-related problem, then thousands and thousands of man hours by scientists and engineers all over the world, they can go away from that and do research on something else. Why they have to do it on lightning? Even now, research on lightning is going on how to protect the aircraft from lightning strike. Because if there is a one lightning strike to aircraft, that's all. The, it will be doomed totally. So even now research is going on. So please don't uh, get uh, covered by this uh, marketing gimmicks words like advanced lightning system or elimination system or whatnot. Okay. Uh, let them go to IEC and then get it approved so that they need not have to go to every individuals for the approval. So I am just telling the same words what Mr. Appau said. Okay, you convince IEC, then you uh, dump DAS all over the world. No problem. It is not possible. It is not practical because DAS is, leave alone, it is not covered in any standard. It is against physics. Okay, something which is against physics, which we have studied in 7th or 8th standard. They are being sold, and uh, I only uh, pity for uh, the people who are uh, bamboozled by these uh, words and then using this technology and end up with uh, losing uh, lakhs and crores of equity. Any more question? Kindly raise your hand. Sir is here to answer all the queries you have. <clears throat> Please raise your hand. 
we will admit you and try to give the answer you need. I will just switch on the power. Yeah. Again, Mubarak Khan. Yes, tell me, sir. Okay. Uh, so, uh, one more question I have. Uh, because I just want to clear all my doubts on lightning <laughs> on our side. Okay. Uh, one more thing that uh, in case of a lightning strike, whenever the lightning is getting diverted to the ground, it is causing the ground potential rise, which is in turn causing a surge to uh, flow through the ground conductor to whatever it finds on, on its path. So sometimes I, if it comes inside the home, it will damage your electronics, etc. And if it is going on the overhead lines, it will cause a, a, a surge or spark or failure of the insulators, uh, right? Uh, if it is crossing the BIL level of the insulator. So I have seen these uh, in some, some places. I have seen there are some R gaps which are being used, right? So are these approved or is there any guideline of all, uh, what all provisions can be given on the overhead line? for protection against the surges caused by the lightning strike. Yeah, uh, okay. I can explain to certain extent and Dr. Arora can explain much more. See, like whatever I have covered today, the low voltage speed is, which is up to 1000 volts AC. For medium voltage also, there are lightning arresters available. And most of them are based on the MOV, metal oxide varistors. And, uh, uh, so, as uh, like you have the IEC standard for low voltage, you have the standard for medium voltage and high voltage also. So, there are lighting arresters available for that also. I think Dr. Arora uh, who has written an article recently in a uh, magazine on that. He can explain also more on that. Yeah, Mubarak Khanji, so far high voltage is concerned, we are using the arcing horn. That is called the arcing horn that is installed near to conductor that is covering your insulator at the time of backflash. Backflash happens when the lightning strike on your tower and it goes back to your line to avoid that thing to uh, protect your insulator that arcing horns are provided. And the latest technologies, we are also installing line charge arrestor on that. In, if you are not using the lightning arrestor for the line, the arcing won't definitely help because that creates a short circuit path for that insulator to protect. Like a uh, spark gap we were using earlier days, whenever the high voltage comes, it makes a short circuit between your metallic part and the lines and protect the equipments. Uh, another question. There is one person. Can you unmute, sir? Redmi 9 power. Hello. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Hello? Yeah. Sir, uh, I have a question uh, regarding the... Your introduction, please. Your introduction, please. Yeah, I am Satyajit Kaur from uh, WPAC DC election. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, I have a question, sir, uh, regarding the R thing. Uh, once I know that uh, in the case of measuring the R resistance, we, sh we, we must uh, put into account the... In in case of in place of resistance, we have to put in account that reactance, the impedance, is uh, have to be included in the measurement of earth resistance. So how can we do that, and uh, what will be the frequency of that reactance? Can you just put some light on that, sir? Okay. Uh Again, I will I will uh, give a short answer uh, which can be elaborated by Dr. Arora. Nowadays, there are earth resistance equipment that are available, online earth resistance measurement. Now, like how you measure the current, okay, uh, there are online earth resistance testers are available. Just by inserting that uh, earth resistance tester, 
okay it is available from fluke motuane and so many other uh, companies okay you will know without disconnecting the earth rod okay what is the value of the earth resistance because it follows a loop and v equal to ir technique it uses to find out what is the resistance okay one is that now this four pole method or uh, scumberger method whatever method we are all talking basically they are for green field now assume that uh, you have a dcs in the control system in the second floor of a building and you have say for example 10 earth rods uh, to connect to the earth of the dcs now at the earth rod side the connection may be okay it may be 1 ohm or 0.5 ohm or what not but what is the assurance that that 0.5 ohm or 1 ohm the continuity is there between the earth rod to the dcs that is the most important point okay now at the dcs side if there is a cut due to corrosion or if somebody has done anything and then disconnected whatever value maintain at the earth rod of 0.1 ohm or 0.2 ohm carries no relevance at all now with this online earth resistance meter you can instantly measure the earth resistance right at the point of the equipment without disconnecting any line and even if there is a noise in that line if there is a current flow in that line the meter will also show you the noise in that line okay so now further to dr arora uh, sir your question was related to the tower putting resistance instead of resistance presently we are measuring the impedance i can tell you the reason the reason is very simple resistance has no role to play at the time of lightning because that is a pulse for the microseconds and their wave length is quite different from the 50 hertz power frequency wavelength in that case it becomes mandatory to measure the tower foot impedance that includes reactance also that you are talking about and the many meters are available in the market with the same way as you are measuring your resistance the impedance can also be measured for your tower footing impedances and that is a novel method that is being applied by power grid also even other utility to ensure that at the time of lightning your lines are protected yes please unmute any question uh, uh, sir uh, hello sir can you hear me yeah yeah okay uh, so it, uh, at the time of measuring the impedance uh, can uh, that instrument you have tell you have told about is that uh, instrument uh, generally put the frequency level automatically it, it, or i have to i have to put the frequency level it, it, of uh, like or 128 even... 128 hertz usually 128 128 usually for our resistance is 128 for impedance i have to check that uh, varies company to company and because that is a okay. latest technology and that data to be ascertained before i make any comment it is okay, definitely okay. different from the power frequency yes, 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 yes. definitely uh, very different from different power. yeah it is more than uh, 50 hertz and uh, that will be the or odd or even harmonics or over there may, maybe and uh, that should be into account yeah, when yeah, yeah. i will measure the resistance huh? the main main thing will be the odd reg odd harmonics main uh, point will be there yes that, and for the lightning protection the uh, harmonics are not taking care basically what we are doing okay. we are measuring the impedance that yes. at the time of lightning will be encountered by that lightning to that is going to the ground to tower ground protection. yes sir okay thank you sir. to thank avoid you. a back flash over yes okay. thank you sir the last question we are going to take nagarjun ji please unmute uh good evening honest uh, this is Nagarjun from uh, RBI Bhuneshwar, Reserve Bank of India Bhuneshwar. Mm -hmm. Every year, sir, we, we got lightning strikes and we have that IPCCTV system in our building. So many of the cameras are uh, getting uh, uh, damaged and uh, NVRs and all these things are getting damaged. We have eight conventional eight uh, that uh, <clears throat> lightning arresters and all these things are there. But uh, last year also we have uh, installed that ESC system. Till we didn't get any uh, positive results. 
so our top man management is asking to survey about this lightning uh, uh, system uh, through any iit or any reputed organizations we have inquired any all the iits and all these things but we 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 are not getting any positive response from uh, 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 these institutions so could you help us uh, what is the way to find out the systems okay i have an answer for that one okay. is uh, if, if you have followed the presentation as i said yes. that a lightning protection system can protect the building from direct lightning strike and okay. also from the services you need the surge protection devices to protect the cameras and all other electronic equipment because these are basically two different kind of protection one is for the building another is for building and the people another is for the equipment right. and when you to talked about iit is that gives me a, this thing uh in fact uh, i gave a presentation in iit chennai regarding this uh, iec standard and this uh, spds and all and okay, uh, uh, okay that order value leave it it is something around 2 to 3 lakhs that was not the big thing but uh, as you said uh, after uh, some 3 months i got a call from bpcl chennai southern region they uh, called me for a survey in their uh, this thing i asked him how do you get my number they said that we have contacted iit chennai so iit chennai gave you my number give your number oh. uh, so that was told during the webinar uh, in the um, bpcl so the point is that okay you can approach iits but uh, i am sure that um, iit is also needs uh, training on this iec 62305 uh, if i am mm -hmm. not wrong uh, dr rajesh arora can vouch for it uh, and uh, the very purpose of me going to iits and giving such presentation is to make them aware and inform the customers who are facing such problems so that they can contact the experts in this field and get their problem solved see the biggest problem worldwide is that an equipment is failing see for example a cctv camera is failing yes. now to protect the camera whether i need to have a lighting protection system or spd right if it is mm -hmm. spd whether it is for power line or the data line or communication line so you need to do a survey and i am sure that uh, northeast uh, part of india is having lot of problems related to lightning and mm -hmm. even i have been approached by many oil companies that i am not getting solution from eil on this please come and do the survey and then give the recommendations i did it uh, for many of the oil companies in northeast so the okay. only way is to read the iec 62305 understand do the risk analysis and then find the protection devices whether it is a lps or spd or eq potential bonding or shielding bonding routing you need to have all these techniques as explained in the flow chart so that your and i am sure that your problem of failure can be reduced to by 100% i am telling okay. you with confidence that with 100% but you need to do a proper survey and then the proper recommendation and proper installation with the eq potential bonding technique can only solve all your problems dr okay, Arnold, sir. anything to add please thank you sir Thank you. Sir, we, uh, shall we get any uh, surveying institutes or uh, recommendations on that survey? Any institutions or uh, can you give us some? Uh, sir, you can call, sir, for your... Okay, sir. Sitting there, I will share okay. with you. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your good <laughs> name, sir? Nagarjun, sir. Nagarjun. Nagarjun. Okay. Yes. Fine. Okay. okay. And uh, any more question from any participant? Or should we close the session and we will be coming again with new topic and we will request sir to come again with new different topic and there will be another interactive session that we had right now. Okay. And sir, thank you very much, sir. Thank you for sparing your time and you, sharing the experience you have. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you all the participants. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Namaskar. Namaskar. Have a great weekend. Same to you. Sir.